Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today we're going to be talking about the idea that because consciousness is only awareness, free will is impossible. Um, okay, let's begin. Well, actually, before we go into that, we'll just go into the, you know, the meaning of what, what we say when we, um, when we mean free will, what we mean when we say it, and, um, and then, you know, just why, why this is important, why this is so important for us to, uh, to get this question right. Okay. The um, term free will means that we would, would be able to freely choose, to choose whatever we want, regardless of anything, regardless of our genes, regardless of what we did or didn't learn in school or from our parents. Uh, regardless of our personalities, which are like 50% genetic. Um, regardless of anything that we're not in control of. Think of it that way. And naturally, um, so many things that we're not in control of um, come together and, um, and decide not just our will for us, decide everything, decide fate, destiny. You know, because, I mean, the, the, um, perhaps the most universal answer to this question of human will is um, to consider the universe, you know, the state of the universe at one moment, um, creating the state of the universe at the next moment, or causing the state of the universe at the next moment. And then that state will cause the state after that. And so, like, let's say we started with the Big Bang, and we carry that causal chain up to the present and into the future, it's a continuous cause and effect chain of states of the universe, the universe evolving. And think about it. Um, if the universe is evolving moment by moment, state by state, then everything within the universe must be evol evolving with it according to its evolution. So, um, all right, so like that's way, one way to understand it. The other way is. Um, we have an unconscious, and this unconscious is not just by definition, but empirically and logically and uh, in any other way, something that our conscious mind is not aware of, okay? And this is like, you know, this is similar to the theme of this show, but um, if, if our conscious mind is not aware of the unconscious, and everything we base, or so much of what we base our decisions on, is, has to be in the unconscious, because the conscious mind can only be aware of, let's say, one or perhaps a few things at a time. And with a lot of our decisions, they, uh, they involve many factors. Because of that, and um, because our conscious mind can't access that, that information, you know, obviously, it's not making, it's not making the decision. You know, if the conscious mind can't access the information in the unconscious, clearly it has to be an unconscious process that's sifting through that information in the unconscious to make every decision we make. And then it makes our conscious mind aware of what it has decided, which is actually the theme of, of this show that, that consciousness is really nothing more than awareness. Consciousness does not decide. All of the decisions are based in the unconscious. Okay, so let's, let's and, and the reason why this is like so important is primarily because of blame. I mean, um, the world, even those of us like myself who, um, who get this, who get that free will is an illusion, we are all kind of like conditioned and programmed because of this free will belief to blame ourselves and each other. Um, and because like when you attribute a free will to someone or to yourself and they do, for example, something wrong, because like, you know, kind of like the definition of being human is like we get a lot right, but we also get a lot wrong. And, um, you know, it's just... Um, when we have that perspective and other people do things wrong, we will direct our disappointment, 
our blame, no, our indictment, our, you know, often aggression um, toward them, you know, and that leads at the very least to conflict. A lot of times it leads to just like, you know, wanting to um, seek vengeance against them and punish them and or see them be punished and all that. And basically what it does, you know, this, this attitude of blame, this, this erroneous conclusion of blame based on this free will illusion, it separates people from, from each other. It, it creates needless conflict. Okay, and, and this world, you know, this world, um, we're going through an amazing, an amazing um, phenomenal revolution, you know, the Occupy 99% versus the 1% revolution. It's already won, but it's playing itself out. And um, to the extent, to the extent that we go through these coming months, um, you know, year or two, with the understanding and perspective that reality is causal and human will is causal, then we can go about the world-changing um, changes. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a brand new world. There, there's so much that will be done, that has to be done. And if we go about it through a causal perspective, it'll be so much more joyful, peaceful, um, non-confrontational, non-adversarial. Okay. So, let's, let's get on with the show. All right. Um, so, conscious mind is only aware of one or a few concepts, the conscious mind. Okay, so like, you know, that means, you know, like I could be, right now I'm aware, I'm looking at number three on this camera, okay? Um, to the left I see my sign, I'm, you know, I'm aware of this light. I'm, I'm, right now I'm aware of myself talking. You know, you're aware of listening to, to me right now. You might be aware of a few other things. But you, you're not aware, I'm not aware of so many different things. You know, there's a limit. I mean, it could be one, who knows? But um, that's the thing. Um, Okay, so again, the conscious mind can only be aware of one or a few things um, at a time. Okay, the second thing, this is what we talked about um, a few minutes ago. Because the unconscious is a part of our brain that our conscious mind is, cannot access, cannot access, um, or let's say cannot access yeah, cannot access. I mean, you got to realize, all right, it's unconscious to the conscious mind. The conscious, the unconscious part of our brain, you know, the conscious mind is simply not aware that it's there. You know, and the reality, I mean, I'm going to get into it a bit later in the show, but I think it'll make a bit more sense now, is that what happens is the unconscious mind does things, decides, processes information, and then makes the conscious mind aware. I mean, that's the theme, that's the... Uh, that's the, um, the point of the show, but, but the idea right here is, you know, <laughs> you can't, a conscious mind, consciousness, cannot make a decision based on stuff in the unconscious if it doesn't, if it can't, um, if it doesn't know it's there, if it's not aware of the unconscious. Okay, so, yeah, so now, now we're leading to, to the point of the show. Consciousness means awareness. It doesn't mean decision-making, okay? To be conscious doesn't mean to decide. To, con to be conscious simply and only means to be aware. So we're conscious of our external reality. You know, we're conscious of, of our feelings, of our thoughts, of our internal reality. We're conscious of whatever. We're like perceiving whatever. Um, but again, the point here is that um, consciousness is not a mechanism for decision. It's a mechanism for <coughs> awareness, for perception. Okay. Um, so, so here's what happens. You, you make a decision, any decision, and that decision is based on, let's say, your moral principles, um, hedonic principles in terms of like what you believe or predict is going to be best for yourself or people you care about in the future. It's partly based on your genes, your genetic makeup. Personality is about 50% genetic. Um, it's based on what you learned in the past, all your experiences, you know, your past learning, your, your upbringing. Um, 
So it's based on a lot, okay? And remember, we, t we talked about um, the, the truth that our conscious mind can only be aware of one or at most a few things at a time in order to make a decision. So, and, and again, the conscious mind is not even like aware of this, this part of the unconscious mind. So, so like, because any decision we make is based on all those factors that have to be kind of like brought together and kind of like crunched, uh, like a computer crunches information to, to get a, um, an answer. Because of that, that means that the decision making, oh, and, and because the conscious mind is not, you know, um, aware of the unconscious mind, that means that every decision, that whatever decision we're considering, has to be made at the level of the unconscious. You know, because the unconscious is the only part of, of the mind that, um, that has access to itself. You know, that's, that's the point. Okay, um, now, in terms of like, you know, all of the, um, we have like neuro, neurological evidence of, um, of decision making. We don't have neurological evidence of conscious um, decision making in the sense that um, there's also experimentation, for example, that, that shows like, let's say we consciously make a decision, um, a researcher about, let's say, five, 10 minutes or five, 10 seconds before you've made the decision will know what decision you've decided. So, so we have evidence, we have empirical evidence that, you know, that unconscious processes precede our, our decision. But I think what I'm trying to say more clearly here, we have no evidence for any kind of conscious decision. We, we have no evidence that any decision that we make has been made at the level of the unconscious. We have absolutely no evidence of that. It's a deduction we make, and I'm going to do a show on this soon. But, um, so the idea is like, the only evidence we have is of our conscious mind becoming aware of a decision that obviously had to have been made at the level of the unconscious because that's where both the data and the processing of the information is for, for our minds. All right, so now let's get um, directly to the theme. So that means that, um, you know, awareness, if, if our conscious mind is limited to simply being aware in the sense of our, in the case of our decisions of what our unconscious mind has decided, um, again, that's not free will. You know, our, our conscious mind is, uh, is only a tool for awareness or, you know, I'm not sure, a uh, tool, I guess, I don't know. But, um, but it cannot, it, it cannot make decisions. And therefore, like a conscious mind cannot be a freely willed mind. A, a conscious mind, there's actually, you know, all right, what I'm trying to say is like, there's actually no such thing as conscious will. You know, will is volition. Will is the process of making decisions. So like, if consciousness is limited only to awareness, then, um, then um, you know, it, it, it's, it cannot will. It is, it's not a will. It's not a, um, a tool of volition. All right. Um, I want to I wanna stay on this point uh, because it, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a very easy way to understand why free will is impossible and free will is an illusion. Um, think about it. Our conscious mind is only a, um, an organ, a, um, a part of our mind for awareness. You know, to be conscious is simply to be aware. It's not to decide. To be conscious is to, to be conscious of decisions that have been made that, quote unquote, we made, but we certainly didn't freely make them because of the role of our unconscious. Because, because both, you know, the information that is being considered and the, um, and the processing of this information is in the unconscious. All right, we've got about 12 minutes left. And um, I think I've covered this. I think I've covered this enough, um, especially since um, 
Yeah, I'm going to do a, a show that's really pretty similar to this next. Um, so I want to I want to spend like the last 12 minutes or so just just going back to you know why this matters, what you know what what this is about, why it matters, why why it's so important. Because a lot, a lot of people will say, "All right, fine, you know, like we don't have a free will, but." Why, how will that affect anything, our knowing this or our accepting this, our understanding this? And, um, and all right, when you, a cursory look, you know, just um, without really delving into the question, you know, you, you, you may, it may not make sense, but, but think about it. Um, when we attribute a free will to others, Again, and, and they do wrong. They do something that's wrong. Um, if we believe that they have a free will, we believe that it's right, that it's rational, that, it, um, that it's appropriate you know, to, to blame them, to hold them responsible for what they did that was wrong. You know, and this, let me tell you, this is like such a universal insanity because like even, you know, again, I'm working against this. I'm kind of like... You know, when this happens in my life, I'm getting so much better at um, at simply um, at simply just remind myself. Wait a minute, this person is just acting out the universal will. You know, I have I have have absolutely no reason, no good reason, no rational reason, logical reason to to hold the person accountable. And with so much that goes on in life every day, that is like such a blessing and a godsend. Because what happens is like when, when, you, when you approach other people with that causal will perspective rather than free will perspective, and they make mistakes, you deal with what the mistakes are, with what you believe are the mistakes. And you, you kind of like are able to consider that much more clearly without the whole matter being clouded up by the blame factor. Um, yes, it's true that when we um, do things that are wrong, certain corrective actions have to be taken. You know, um, we certainly don't want to allow others to just like do wrong against us um, indiscriminately without, you know. I mean, it's like, you know, this, this understanding that, that human will is causal, we have a causal will rather than free will. It's, it's neither license for people to kind of like say, well, it's not up to me what I do so I can do whatever I want. And it's not something about which we, sh we should think, well, I'm going to, you know, I have to be a doormat. That means to, to whatever. No, you, you do what you have to do. But again, in 99% in of the cases, um, when you remind yourself very quickly, this person does not have a free will. Or if it's, you know, with yourself, I don't have a free will then that blame just disappears. And, and you'll find if you work with this, um, it'll, um, you know, you'll, you'll find that, that you get better and better at it. That's, that's, that's what I'm feeling in my life. And let me tell you something. My main gig, my main research is happiness. You know, um, I may be going, doing another show on it soon. I'm not sure. But, um, but to the extent that we can, like, cut off that anger as soon as we can and then deal with whatever, you know, in a pleasant way, because the anger is, tends to be an unpleasant emotion, that, that leads to greater happiness. And I, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm using it on myself, and it absolutely works. Okay, um, so we've got like eight minutes left, and um, I want to, like, this is like so huge. I mean, it, it's hard to kind of like, um, all right, I'm going to do some advertising. I have to do some advertising. I'm sorry, because like, you know, basically this is cable TV. We're going out to White Plains and Scarsdale and some other communities in the area, and we're online. And my partner, who's producing a show in Manhattan, The Messenger, and I um, do a show on Wednesday nights in Manhattan. Um, basically, I mean, people are getting this. You know, we're doing this show. This is huge. This is like, this couldn't be huge. This is the biggest thing. In the, I mean, this Occupy Revolution, the 99 versus 1%, I mean, that's, you know, that couldn't be more huge. Um, you know, creating a more, a fairer, better world, a sustainable world. But, but see, that's, you know, that's kind of like more institutional. Um, whereas this is like this change going from a, a, 
a free to a causal world perspective is at a much more primal foundation, a level. You know, it's the level of our perception of reality. Think about it. There's, you know, um, there's two facts to human existence, two first facts. The, the first is that, um, is that we exist. You know, it's obvious, clear. But the second fact is that we do things. We do things, you know, naturally based on decisions. We decide things. And for humanity, for, for, our, for all of our institutions, and, you know, Occupy hasn't addressed this yet. I'm, I'm trying to help them understand that, that um, a causal world perspective is um, a logical foundation to what they're doing. But, um, but to the extent that... Um, they don't understand that, then all of our institutions are founded on this illusion of free will with its, you know, um, necessary component of blame. You know, that's the thing. It's, you know, with free will, you can't but blame. That's, that's what free will is about. It's about accountability. I mean, it's, it's about credit also. It's not just about blame. But, um, but yeah, this, this, um, this awakening, you know, talk about the Arab awakening and now the... Uh, the global awakening um, of the 99%, this awakening of, of the world to, to the truth, to the fact that human will, we have a causal will rather than a free will, is, um, as, a, is as the beginning of the show says. It's bigger than Einstein, Copernicus, Galileo, Newton, Darwin. You know, it's like, it, um, we're getting the second fact of human existence completely wrong and so it restores that rightness to it and what, is, what does it do it, it basically restores fundamental sanity to the human race because as long as all of our institutions and even those of us who understand that free will is an illusion are nonetheless so conditioned to act to to believe we do to, to have so many of our reactions be based on that um mistaken conclusion, uh, illusion, then, then, you know, um, my God, that, you know, if, if, if we can correct that to the extent that, we, you know, we have that belief, it, you know, we can create problems, we have you know, institutional problems, when we, when we understand that, that reality is causal, that human will is causal, then we can change our institutions also, you know, um, with the Occupy 99% versus a 1% movement, it may lead to things like, you know, one salary for everyone on the planet, which seems very fair. And, you know, because like we were talking about uh, blame being the, uh, the fundamental, perhaps, consideration uh, regarding the benefits of understanding that our, we have causal wills rather than free wills. But the other side of it is credit. So in other words, if we can't rationally blame any of us for anything we do, we can't rationally credit any of us for anything we do. So like me doing this show, yeah, I'm doing something greater than, than Einstein, Newton, Fro um, Freud, of course, um, Copernicus, Galileo. I'm doing something greater than they did, but I understand that it has nothing to do with me. You know, it's the universe of will just kind of like using me as a tool, as an instrument. And, and like, so, but it's the same with, with everyone. You know, people like Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, um, Rupert Murdoch, so many billionaires that have so much under this like diluted system of free will, you know, um, free will based system, um, to the extent that we understand that the human will is causal, there is no rationale really um, for, for allowing so much of the resources of, of humanity to just be, you know, concentrated in, in a few individuals because again, they don't have a free will. And, and fairness, fairness and, and, um, and a better world is, is much more important than, um, than a person's right to make as much money as they want based on a delusion that they share with, with others that they're actually, you know, um, responsible or credit worthy for what they do. So, um, so yeah, this, you know, this whole theme topic of human will um, has um, fundamental importance to the changes that are going on in this world right now, to the, uh, to the um, monumental historic changes. 
Um, we got about two more minutes left. And um, okay, so let's let's just recap the basic point of, of this um, show. Okay, consciousness. We are conscious. I'm conscious right now of the camera, the number one camera. You're conscious of seeing me. We're conscious of stuff. Consciousness is nothing more than awareness. I got I got to do another commercial. Wait a minute. <laughs> All right, this show is on every Wednesday night here in White Plains and around the area. But you know, I upload the shows to the internet. Um, go to causalconsciousness.com. Um, exploring illusion or Google exploring illusion of free will. All the shows are on there. And every Wednesday, this is very cool. It, you know, this show, it's um, we're our show, the myth of free will. In Manhattan, every Wednesday night, 11 p.m. If you live in Manhattan, channel 56. But if you don't live in Manhattan, the station, the network, Manhattan Neighborhood Network, streams the episodes live at that time. And this is a call-in show. This is like the coolest thing in the world. We've been, we've taped, um, we've done uh, 10 episodes already. Um, and uh, so call us. You know, um, watch us every Wednesday. Again, it's New York. Um, 11 p.m. And if you go to the site, you know, um, Exploring Illusion of Free Will, you'll see a link to, to that actual, you know, watch the show to the live stream. All right. Um, so, yeah, back to the theme. <laughs> um, hey, con consciousness is only awareness. To be conscious of something is not to decide something. That all happens within the realm of the unconscious. And that is a revolutionary truth that the world is finally waking up to. I was on the way to Occupy Wall Street um, a couple of weeks ago. Two young girls, one come by, they see my sign saying, transcend the illusion of free will. One of them says to me, you have just made my friend so incredibly happy. So people are getting it. Okay, have a great day.